Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Danton and today let's talk about episode 41 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's anime series. An episode in where Ranze duels Gakuto and the school gets painted blue. But first and foremost let's talk about Goha as they've now begun to embrace rush dueling if only on the surface level. As we now have maximums being rumoured to have been printed and released to the public. A rumour that is now backed up with that announcement at the end of the episode with a Rush Duel tournament coming soon. Now, when this announcement got announced, we ultimately have an ulterior motive behind this. As the character that announces this event is called Sweets Kokoko, another character that heavily resembles both Sorako and Finger Chikako, who we know are part of Goha as a special division that helps get rid of anyone or anyone aligned with Goha views as an enemy. But Goha's involvement does not stop there as we already have seeds being planted in relation to a possible conflict between Mimi and President Drone. Mimi states that she's a fan of Rush Jewels yet understands that its growing popularity is a problem for Goha's future. As well as the fact is the Drone would not allow any failure on Goha's company in the slightest. Maybe Mimi is aware or even afraid that if she doesn't act, uh, act to fix this issue that is Rush Jewels, her job or even her life could be at risk. As for Maximums being printed by Goha, although not yet confirmed but reinforced with the tournament announcement, I have my concerns. I really hoped that Maximums would remain rare only being used by a select few within the series, thus making the duels for Maximum more appealing and less likely. However, with that being said, Goha wasn't given much screen time, but they used it very effectively in this episode, and now using their problem, which is rush dueling, and turning it into a possible solution. If you can't beat them, join them, or in Goha's mindset, control them. Switching gears now, let's talk about Ranze, as in this episode gave her a lot of focus and ended rather surprisingly with her going to Neil. In my opinion, indicates that she does need to serve underneath someone and even though Gakuto won the duel, her actions towards him is what prevents her from returning to his side. Her words and jokes were out of character and disrespectful towards her former master. Arriving late to their duel, refusing to answer Gakuto's questions, and even mim mimicking or taking the mick out of Yami Ruler and Gakuto's other monsters. So her going to Neil is her way of kind of staying with her family traditions in needing to become a background support for somebody, but at the same time atoning for her sins and crimes of disrespecting her former master. Ultimately, she is going to retrain herself and one day get to the feeling that she is ready to return to Gakuto's side once more. But yeah, I mean, I don't think this was a planned thing from the start because there's no real motive for getting Gakuto fired up because Gakuto already had a really good arc in the last season. So we already know that Gakuto is quite a serious when it comes to dueling. He's a competent duelist and, you know, there's no reason to ignite a fire within Gakuto that already existed and already burnt. I will admit, over the past few episodes, Ranze's character has really grown on me, as I've been loving the VA's voice work when it comes to Ranze's character. It really fits the character, and overall, it adds to the enjoyment whenever she's on screen, which is a pleasant to hear, nevertheless. As for why she started acting the way that she did, she was misled by her delusions, believing that she was the protagonist that orchestrated everything about the past events throughout the show, basically over-exaggerating everything. I think we went to Rome at one stage. We even went to the Armageddon movie another stage. And we, of course, had like all the characters dressed up as samurai with Guardian in the background and everybody else involved. It was wacky, it was crazy, it was over the top, it was funny. But at the same time, this is what drove her to act the way that she did. She felt like she deserved better. She wanted more than just being a background support 
for Gakuto. Now, this episode does help add an element of realism into it, as I'm sure a lot of people in life have imagined a scenario of themselves in their own mind and sought to make it a reality, or just wanting to better themselves and become something better than they currently have. Now, Ranze did show a glimmer of encouragement as well in this episode, pushing Gakuto to his limits. This could hint to her trying to basically do that on purpose to force him to break those limits, thus making him be able to shine brighter as a leader. But honestly, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I think it's just Ranze acting on her delusions, because we constantly see that with her character and it fits the theme of her character as well. So I don't think there's any orchestrated plan behind the scenes, despite what the episode might try and mislead us into thinking. Plus that trap card, Sleeping Scythe Jutsu. Not only has amazing art, but also a really good effect. And honestly, when I start playing Rush Jewels, if they ever come to the UK, I really do want to use Ranze's cards because I love, Entran uh, I love her ace monster, Entra Entrancer as well as some of the artwork that she has throughout her archetype. I think they are look stunning. So yeah, I mean, honestly, with her character, I do hope we see more. I hope it doesn't signal the end for Ranze's character. Nevertheless, though, I thought it was a good focus and showcasing for her. Now, Gakuto getting another win, I thought, worked in the grand scheme of things, even if the stipulation wasn't upheld at the end of the duel. Having Ranze still not go to Gakuto's side afterwards does help demonstrate the fact that she understood the disrespectfulness that her actions carried. Overall, with Gakuto's character, it seemed like he did grow a bit more, which makes sense considering the, the challenge he had to face and overcome. Plus, if we go back another arc, we saw the challenges Gakuto had to overcome, and of course, we knew that because he had to do that, he would develop as a character further. This episode just helps emphasise that and showcases how much she's grown since the start of the show. Which I thought was a great showcasing and a good display. Plus, his new ace monster looks incredible and probably my favourite monster that he has in his current deck. But if I had to compare the display of development of Gakuto's character in this episode to Roman's development last episode, I have to say Roman does win here, as this wasn't a major Gakuto focus episode. I think this will arrive soon in where we find out what Gokuto's true dream in life will be, but at the moment we don't have a set focus for Gokuto's character to work towards. Obviously with Roman, she wants to have a jam with Princess G. With Rook, he wants to become King of Duels. With Yuga, he wants to expand rush dueling and keep working on his roads. But with Gokuto, we don't really have a solid foundation or a solid goal to kind of push his character towards. So I feel like for next time we have focus on Gakuto, we're going to have just that. Now I thought I'd wear blue as it seemed quite fitting for this episode because both Gakuto wears blue and the character of Rook gives a small taste of power and all helps break loose, making the score more bluer than Roa's apartment after Roman cut curry that one episode. His comedy wasn't that bad in this episode as well as it wasn't too over the top but it did say true to character in wanting to become king and showcasing just how corrupt he'll become if he has a small taste of said power. As well as the fact is it shows off his love for drag ears, which corrects me if I'm wrong, but he hasn't used drag ears in his last few duels throughout the series. Hmm. Strange. Since Rook got that other ace monster in his focus episode at the start of the uh, Machine Cavalry arc, he hasn't new drag ears at all, if I remember correctly. So why he kept saying he wants to make the blue like drag ears was a bit of a mystery. Nevertheless, though, still pretty cool. And it's great to see that he still does care about his ace monster that he originally used at the start. But with Tiger entering the episode at the end, helps to allude to her entering this tournament that gets announced. As clearly... She sees that announcement with the rest of the cast. As well as the fact is, of course, she's grounding Rook for his ridiculous ways. But poor Kaizo, you didn't have to destroy him like that, did you, Tiger? 
I know you're over the top and you're OP and you're amazing, but chill out a bit on Kaizo, yeah? You didn't need to break. Nevertheless, though, it was good seeing her for a brief interaction, but hey, Tiger's always amazing when she's on screen. Overall, I thought this episode was strange, but in a good way. Enjoyable, nevertheless. Plus, I thought the fact that a tournament being announced the same episode that followed the Switch game for Rush Dueling being announced was quite coincidental. No episode next week, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. I do think there's no episode because we're moving to um, the Sunday time slot as of episode 42. Nevertheless, though, there will still be a video arriving on this channel. A new series, in fact, in where we'll be looking to try and obtain every number exceeds monster um, throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. If that's even possible, I don't know if it is, but we do have loads of random number cards coming soon. So make sure you check out next weekend for a video that should be coming then, all being well. But if you want to stay up to date on things like that, then make sure you follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel down below as well and comment your thoughts because I want to know what you think of this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, hit that like button. But above all else, I hope you have an amazing day. Alligator, matane, goodbye.